And so we went out looking for models of, you know, is somebody doing it right? And are they doing it right in the United States? Looked at another way, it's nothing less than a 180 degree shift in the way we think about managing and leading. The models and the metaphors of the past have been the manager as a cop, as a referee, as a devil's advocate, as a naysayer, as a pronouncer. The words that we found that seem much more appropriate in the excellent companies are the manager, the leader, as a cheerleader, as a coach, as a facilitator, as a nurturer of champions. The drumbeat and the drumbeat that has been so sadly missing was it all comes from people. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Donald Duck's 50th birthday parade. <laughs> If you're looking for excellence in American business, this parade is a good place to start. The best loved characters ever created are strutting their stuff down Main Street at Walt Disney World, and people are having the time of their lives. Disney Productions theme parks are designed and managed with only one thing in mind, satisfying the customer. When it comes to providing an entertainment vacation land for the whole family, Disney has no peer. Orlando, Florida. The gates to Walt Disney World open at 9 a.m. every day of the year. In less than an hour, the grounds are mobbed. On a busy summer day, more than 100,000 people will converge on the park. The price of a one-day ticket to the Magic Kingdom or Epcot Center is $18. Five adults for Magic Kingdom one day. But most folks buy a three- or four-day pass, stay on the property at one of three Disney-owned hotels and eat their meals in Disney restaurants. Last year, the park hosted 23 million people from all over the world and took in gross receipts of $730 million. What is it that attracts people in these numbers? In a word, the irresistible magic of Disney make-believe. Mickey Mouse, the park trademark, is the emblem of that magic. When a Disney executive takes you out to lunch and tells you it's on the mouse, he's not kidding. But how is it possible to sustain a seamless world of make-believe in the midst of this teeming crowd? The Disney solution to this challenge is one of the best examples in American business of how a large company communicates its values to its employees. The world of make-believe isn't real. It's a continuous performance occurring all around you. The physical park is a giant stage. But to come alive, a stage needs performers. What Disney does better than anyone else in the business is train its employees to be performers in a live show. Come on, raise them real high, repeat after me. I hope, I hope. we never yeah. return. Okay, yeah. keep it in mind, we'll be in good shape. As we leave civilization behind, we enter the mighty Amazon River of South America. Oh, look at this. We're moving into a pool of dangerous hippopotami. <laughs> they can easily upset our boats. Now watch out for these guys, they are dangerous. They've been sinking our boats all week long. Oh, there's a charger on the left, and another one's on the right side. Uh oh, hey crew, shh, shh. We're in headhunter territory now, yeah? It's important we Every smallest detail of the company's elaborate training program is designed to create an awareness in its employees that Walt Disney World is, above all, show business. Bye-bye, crew. Bye-bye. Ten minutes of the jungle and you forget your manners. Oh, savage, savage. There is no personnel office here. You are hired at Central Casting. And on day one as a new hire, everyone is required to take Traditions One at Walt Disney University. Does anybody know all seven dwarfs? Anybody got all seven dwarfs? Go ahead. <laughs> Doc, sneezy, grumpy, dopey, sleepy, happy, and droopy. 
Nope. You got six out of seven. What's the seventh oh, one? That's right. Bashful. That's right. There's no Godzilla. The day begins with apparently trivial pursuits, but there is method here. As the trainer drills his class about Mickey and Snow White and Fantasia, he enfolds them in Walt Disney's vision of the Magic Kingdom. He creates the illusion that Walt himself is present in the room, welcoming the new hires to his personal domain. The object is to make these new employees feel like partners with the park's founder, sharing a mission to create the most wonderful place in the world. And if you went to Tomorrowland, you could... There is no better example of how a large company instills values in its employees. And of course, he made sure he kept the place clean. He made sure it was simple and unconfusing. He made sure that he gave the people a good value for the dollar that they spent when they visited Disneyland. And most of all, he made sure that all of his employees were friendly, polite, courteous, and helpful. Just grab a seat, make yourself comfortable. After lunch, yeah. the class moves to a small theater, to the perfect sleep, setting in which to learn that they are all to be players in a live performance. What business are we in? You know, everybody knows that McDonald's makes hamburgers. General Motors makes automobiles. Sony makes TVs. But what does Disney make? Makes people happy. Exactly. Doesn't matter who they are, where they come from, what they do, what language they speak, what color they are, or anything else. We're here to make them happy. Nobody's been hired for a job. Everybody has been cast for a role in our show. Because of that, everyone is a cast member. You're all hosts and hostesses.